Sup you guys, ASD Classified here. So, let's talk about this episode, huh? Episode 7, I think. Episode 7 of Power Rangers Super Mega Force, Silver Lining. So, the episode begins with an alien spaceship crashing into our planet in the night. I don't know, and I just really like this scene, you know. I guess because it's a night scene and we hardly get scenes like that in Power Rangers, but just seeing the spaceship, like, fly over the city and then just crash land, like, I don't know, I just really like this scene. And the spaceship, it looks like a broken down alien armada ship. So it's like, hmm, who is this mysterious person piloting this alien armada ship? Hmm. Meanwhile, at the command center, Gosei apparently senses that the spaceship entered the Earth, you know, and he wakes up Tenso like, Tenso, wake up! A spaceship entered the planet, but I can't tell if it landed or crashed. Oh no! You know, and then nothing. Like, nothing comes from this scene. Like, what was the point of this? I don't... What? How are you gonna be like, oh no, a ship crash landed, what should we do? Well, guess we should go back to sleep. I don't... What? Oh my god. They didn't even call back to this scene later. Like, if they had used this scene later to, like, when it's the morning, like, tell the rangers to go check, like, maybe these coordinates, the ship landed somewhere over here, check for it in this area or something, but nothing, literally nothing came from this scene. Like, what was the point of it? But then they'll be asking, what's the point of ghost saying? It's like, what's the point of asking these repetitive questions? So I don't mean. Okay, so our villains. So at the villain base, Prince Vakar came up with a brilliant plan, you guys. A very brilliant plan. He's going to send x to Earth. x upon x upon x -borgs. So, you may be asking... How is this any different from any other episode of Super Mega Force? Well, he's not going to send a monster with them. He's just going to send foot soldiers. Yeah. <sighs> so the villains go with this stupid and repetitive plan. And then the rangers are notified by Tenso that, Oh my god, x boys they're attacking the warehouse district. I don't know. And then the rangers, they run to the warehouse district. But... The x borgs have already been defeated. Then the Rangers get another call from Tinsel like, Oh no, x borgs they're attacking downtown. The Rangers rush downtown. The x borgs there have also been defeated. <gasps> What's going on, you know? And then there's like this big old mystery. Like, who is defeating these x borgs Like, who besides the Power Rangers can tangle with them, you know? Then Tinsel calls the Rangers again. The x borgs are attacking downtown. Again, I guess. And then the Rangers go downtown again. And the X-Boys have been defeated yet again before the Rangers arrive. So, hmm. So, after this third incident, the Rangers decide to ask, you know, the people that are still there, like, what happened? And then the, the, some of the people were telling them, like, oh my god, it was awful. These X-Boys, they showed up. We thought we were goners. And then we were saved by the Silver Ranger. And then the Power's like, what? Silver Ranger? What? Who? What? Who? Uh? You know... Okay. <laughs> All right, I have I have questions here. I have questions about this whole scenario of the Rangers running to fight x boys and x boys being beaten and they don't know what's going on. I have questions. <laughs> okay, question one. Why couldn't they just teleport here? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure most of the other viewers have forgotten that the Rangers can teleport since they only did it in one episode last year in the premiere. But teleportation, if there's any time to use it, it would have been in this episode. Secondly, why on earth can't Gosei and Tenso see what's going on? Like, they have their little viewing cube thing. <laughs> like, the viewing cube, they have five viewing cubes that, that can show them what's going on. They can't see that a Silver Ranger showed up and beat these x -Borgs. Like, really? Really? Like, we saw in this episode that Tenso was looking at Troy in the viewing cube when he called him, but he can't see the, where the x boys were and he can't see that a Silver Ranger showed up and cleared them out? What? Wow. 
Moving on. So the Rangers are really confused about the concept of a Silver Ranger running around. They're like, what Silver Ranger? That's impossible. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, another X-Borg attack up shows up. But this time, a monster is with these X-Borgs because the prince, you know, is like, okay, well, this isn't working. Let's just send a monster with them, I guess, whatever. So yeah, a monster and X-Borgs are attacking, but the Rangers this time get there before anybody else do. So the Rangers are fighting these X-Borgs and beat them. Then the prince sends down more X-Borgs with the monster. Then the Silver Ranger shows up and clears out all the X-Borgs in a very fancy and awesome fight, you know. And the Rangers are just standing there like, oh no, Silver Ranger, it really is one. Like, who is he? How come we never heard of him? <laughs> you know, all those type of comments. So yeah. Silver Ranger clears out all the X-Borgs and he's like, I'm, I assume that you Rangers can take it from here, right? And then he leaves. And then, the prince sends down more X-Borgs. Yeah. And, but I don't think that these X-Borgs did anything. I think after he sent down more X-Borgs, then the monster just fought the Rangers. And the Rangers went into their legendary Ranger mode and they turned into the Galaxy Rangers, you know. Power Rangers lost Galaxy, okay. So, yeah. The Rangers started to fight the monster, but then they found out that the monster had like a protective shield over him that blocked all their attacks, you know, but they kept trying, and then, and then eventually Jake was able to accidentally find the monster's weak spot, which is like the collar that he wears around his neck, like in the back of it is the weak spot, and Jake managed to hit it with his Quasar Saber, which then weakened the force field, and then the monster had to retreat. So, the Rangers see with their own eyes this Silver Ranger. So after a fight with the monsters is all done, what do the Rangers do? They go to Ernie's Brain Freeze to talk about it. Wow. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Maybe people watching me right now may not see what I'm tripping about, but but I'm 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 gonna tell you, right? I'm gonna tell you, right? <laughs> I promise. So the Rangers, they go into Ernie's Brain Freeze to discuss like who is this Silver Ranger guy, you know? That's all fine and dandy. But they're discussing this without Gosei. <laughs> they're discussing this without their mentor. I have never seen something like this in any other Power Rangers season where you just leave your mentor out of the most important conversations that you can have. Like, a new Ranger shows up. Well, let's not talk to Gosei about it. Like, wh what? <laughs> this is hilarious to me, man. It's hilarious. Like... Maybe the Rangers have just realized that Gosei doesn't know anything. Because honestly, if they went to that command cave and talked to Gosei, Gosei would have been like, I have no idea who this Ranger is. That's, that's it. So they wouldn't have learned anything. And maybe they know this. So like, all Gosei is good for is giving us multiple powers and a billion Zords. That's it. Anything else, he doesn't know Jack. So why even bother going there? Like, <laughs> maybe that's it. But it's like... Wow. Nobody thought like, hey, last year a random robot showed up, you know, Robo Knight, you remember him? He took over the whole season last year. Like, you know, you remember when Robo Knight showed up and then the Rangers barged into the command cave like, go say, how come you didn't tell us there was another Ranger out there? You know, you remember that? You remember how mad they were at Gosei over there? <laughs> so now a Silver Ranger shows up and nobody thinks to be like, hmm, does Gosei know about this ranger? Is this some ranger that Gosei had like 600 years ago and maybe he buried him in a cave or something? <laughs> like nobody thought that at least ask Gosei though. One more thing. You know, I read this on Ranger Boys. Somebody brought it up. They're like, how come none of the rangers thought that maybe this silver ranger was one of the legendary rangers, you know? I mean, they don't know anything about their ranger history really, so... That could have been a possibility. Me, personally, I don't think the episode loses anything from not having the Rangers be like, oh, maybe the Silver Rangers is one of the legendary people. Like, I don't think that it harms the episode, but it, it would have been nice if one of them had said that. Or, if they had Noah go through the Ranger archive to try to see if the Silver Ranger, you know, is in there. Like, you know, that could have been cool. But, yeah, they didn't need to do that. It just would have been a nice thing to see. But, yeah.
All right, let's talk about our villains again. So the monster, after, you know, getting beat by the Rangers, he's back at the villain base, and Prince Vicar is, you know, yelling at him like, oh, you better get your shit together and beat those Rangers. Go back down there right now, you know? And the monster was like, yes, your highness. And then he was leaving. And before the doors closed, he, like, threw this, like, short hissy feet. He was like, oh, and left. And the prince was like, what? How dare he show me this attitude and disrespect? Who does he think he is? You know, and um, August was like, Your Majesty, I don't think he was angry with you. I think he was angry with himself, you know, for losing. <laughs> and then Domerus chimed in. He's like, Neither his failure or his attitude will be tolerated. I will go destroy him right now. Like, Best line in the episode for me. I'm sorry. Like, I did not expect that from him. <laughs> he said, I will not tolerate any of this monster's bullshit. I'm going to destroy him right now. I loved it. It just came out so badass, man. So, Domus was about to literally go destroy this monster. And then Prince of Car was like, no, wait. Maybe we want his force field to fail. Lavera. And then Lavera came up like, yes, come closer. I have a plan that can destroy the ranges for good. You smell nice, Lavera. New perfume. Smells good on you, baby. So the monster shows up on Earth again with no x -Borgs, thank God. So yeah, he shows up. The rangers show up to combat him and then they look at the um collar around his neck and they see that it looks like it's been upgraded, you know? And then the rangers are like, well, that really must be like, you know, the weak spot behind his back because it's been upgraded. And then the rangers were like, well, we broke it once before, we can break it again. And then they started charging at the monster, you know, hitting the force field, trying to, you know, get to the weak spot. And the Silver Ranger is watching the fight from the sidelines, you know, and he's like, hmm, this just looks too easy. And indeed, it is too easy. Okay, let me explain Prince Vicar's plan. So, Prince Vicar had Lavira make it look like, you know, she fortified the collar, you know, to protect it, but she didn't. She just put a bomb in the collar. So when the Rangers hit the weak spot, it's going to blow up the monster and the rangers. The monster doesn't even know that Prince Vicar did this. Cold-blooded. And even Domarus was shocked by this plan. Like, when the prince was explaining it to him, he was like, You're going to sacrifice one of your top commanders to destroy the rangers? Oh my goodness, he was looking so sad. Like, it's just so shameful to do this. Um, sir... You are literally about to destroy this monster like five minutes ago. You can calm down, okay? So yeah, the Rangers, they're still fighting the monster. And at one point, Jake had a shot at hitting, you know, the weak spot. And then he went for it. But the Silver Ranger jumped in and blocked Jake's sword and, you know, moved him out of the way. He's like, no, this is too easy. Like, it, it must be a trap. Let me handle it, you know. And then the Silver Ranger started fighting the monster. And then he was able to um, remove the collar from the monster's neck with his, like, spear weapon, you know, that Triton thing. So he moved it off the monster and he threw the collar in the air and then it just blew up in the sky <laughs> and then the monster was like oh the prince he used me and the silver ranger was like yep now you know how evil the armada is but i will show you no mercy it didn't you know pretty much the silver ranger killed this monster and he finished them off like he impaled this monster with his final attack which was just it's just freaking awesome man he just threw his spear at the monster and impaled him and i didn't think that they would keep that from gokaja but they did so Awesome. I must also note that during the fights with the Silver Ranger and the villains, he was also like mentioning a little bit of his backstory in his fights. Like, you know, I won't let the same thing that happened to my planet happen to this one. And unfortunately for you guys, I survived. And um, I won't let this planet's heroes fall like mine did, you know. And after he defeated this monster, he's like, and my vengeance begin. And it feels so good. You know, he had these kind of lines. And when I first watched the episode, I'm like, okay, you can calm down a little bit. <laughs> like, don't spoil your whole backstory before you tell us, you know? I just felt like he was going a little on about it. But when I rewatched, I'm like, eh, well, it's not that many lines, so it's okay. So, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. So, at the end of this episode, you know, 
the Power Rangers are like, okay, so seriously, who are you? And then the Silver Ranger turned around and he took off his helmet and he showed his face. And I guess we'll find out who this guy is in part two. Okay, that was the episode. I enjoyed it. Like, I really enjoyed this episode of Super Mega Force, you know? I mean, I pretty much knew I was going to like this from the start of it. Like, when it started, I just really loved that opening scene of the ship coming onto the Earth at night. I just really liked this scene, you know? And when I saw it, I thought that I was actually going to give this episode a 4 out of 5. I just felt like this episode was just going to be really enjoyable. But as the episode went on and I saw some of the flaws in it, yeah, I knocked it down to a 3. I'm giving it a 3 out of 5, but I still really enjoyed this episode, you know. Which is surprising since I haven't enjoyed that many of Super Mega Force, you know, so far. And I'm hoping that I'll like episode 8 as well since, you know, it's connected to episode 7. This Silver Ranger, man, his backstory has so much potential. It can be so interesting, you know. The Armada clearly destroyed his home planet and he's seeking revenge for that. Like, this could be great. It probably won't be, but this can be great. <laughs> it has the potential to be great, you know? So, hoping that they do an adequate job with this, you know? So, yeah. If you're watching this review, what did you think of this episode, Silver Lining Part 1? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was meh? Let me know in the comment, you know? Oh, and um, I did do a review of episode six but I wrote it you know I wrote it on my blog so if you would like to read that you can just letting you know just putting it out there okay you know freaking Casey all right <laughs> later you guys jamata